miss this AI opportunity now and you might regret it for the next decade. The question is, will you be on the winning side? This isn't clickbait. This is the actual revenue I've generated using AI tools. But three years ago, my career had completely collapsed. The mistakes I made were public, painful, and seemed impossible to recover from. Fast forward to today, AI hasn't just helped me rebuild. It's transformed everything. I've generated over a million dollars while becoming a father to my son and reinventing my entire approach to make Making money online. These three specific AI tools changed everything for me. And I'm going to show you exactly how I use them. But here's the truth. 99% of people are still sleeping on the true power of AI. And the gap between winners and losers is growing fast. By the end of this video, you are going to be on the right side of that divide. Let's get into the details of this $1 million AI blueprint that I've used. There are three pillars I've divided of AI wealth creation, the tools, the skills, and the applications. The tools are what we're gonna go through in this video. The first one are coding assistance. Anything that is an IDE, an integrated developer environment that has AI native generation and agenda capabilities, that's gonna be on the list. Bolt, Cursor, there's a bunch of them. The second one are research engines. That means deep search, deep research. Any sort of AI that can look at all sorts of sources, compile, analyze that knowledge, and give you an output. And the third one are autonomous agents. That means an AI that is able to, without any sort of intervention, perform a variety of tasks just like an employee would. And the skills are going to be learned by using these tools. Those skills include prompt engineering, agent system design, AI native development, data preparation, AI strategy, and integration expertise. The last one are applications. These are what we can actually build with the skills we learn from the tools. Those are the actual revenue streams, the way we build, we make money. And then the market alignment and the value creation all of that has to be thought of in the application layer. But to get there, we have to learn the tools and build those skills. I know a lot of people are talking about these tools. There's a lot of hype around AI tools, but there's two different approaches to them. There's the amateur approach, and then there's the pro approach. The amateur is gonna hop around different tools constantly, always be switching, never committing to mastering one. But the pro will master a few key tools, and we'll talk about those in this video. The second mistake is that Amateurs are always passively learning. They're always watching tutorials without any application, but the master, the pro, is going to build applied projects. They're gonna apply their learning to real world projects. The amateur is gonna generically prompt, like just give me this simple working application, please. Whereas the pro is gonna strategically be prompting. They're gonna have a plan drawn out. They're gonna think about what all the bells and whistles, all the features that their app needs are going to be beforehand. They're gonna plan very strategically. And the amateur has no revenue strategy. They just wanna build a cool AI app just cause, whereas the pro has a revenue focus. Everything is based off of revenue and how this app is gonna actually become a sustainable business. So let's talk a little bit about specific numbers here. So last year, in 2024, I generated over a million dollars in revenue across five different AI applications. The first one are trading systems. As you know, I built many trading bots in the past. I have Trader GPT AI trading bot tool that lets anyone build and deploy their own trading bots. Bunch of stocks went up last year. Nvidia went up. That was amazing. Bitcoin went up. That was amazing. But that was a majority. The second one was sports betting, and that's Wager GPT, my AI sports betting community. We have constantly been working on the bot. We've been trying to make it better and the win rate has really impressed us. So it's been really profitable. The third one are AI agents. Now this for me has been in the form of consulting. I have built agents for a surgeon at a hospital, Dr. Sanjay Prasad for surgery quality. And that was a very complex process and I learned a lot and I'm still building AI agents and I'm using them for healthcare specifically because I think that's where the biggest opportunity for agents are. And I've made a lot of money last year from it and I plan to this year as well because there's so much administrative grunt work that doctors and professionals don't wanna do. Perfect for AI agents. And the last one is consulting. Anything outside of agents, just general AI expertise, knowledge, architecture, knowledge, advising, building solutions. That is the great way to make revenue as well. All in all, that's a good amount of revenue last year, but I think this year we can 10 exit 
because we didn't have these AI tools last year that we do this year. So let's talk about each of those. And the market opportunity is going to keep growing, by the way. It's not just stopped here. You're not at the tail end of this. You're at the very beginning. McKinsey predicts that by 2030, this is going to be a $13 trillion economy. Most people just don't realize how rapidly this is happening. Like the window of opportunity is open, but it's closing fast. Like the wealth gap is growing exponentially. The owners of these AI systems are going to dominate all of the wealth. They're going to hoard it all because these AIs are able to scale in a ways that humans can't. So you're either with the program and making money or you're not. So I want you to be with it, right? So let's get into the first demo here. The first tool that I want to talk about are AI coding assistants. In my last video, we talked a lot about what are all the different IDEs, the AI IDEs to use? Cursor, Windsurf, Bolt, AIDE. There were a bunch of them I compared in the last video. And I realized that Bolt was my favorite one, even though I mostly use Cursor for all of my tasks. I like how fast Bolt is. And I like the idea of a browser based IDE because it's just simpler. And I do think that the world is moving in that direction. Whereas we have to deal with installation, dependencies, bugs, system requirements on our local machine. Whereas in the cloud, we don't have to do all of that. So I love the zero setup required of Bolt. That being said, I do believe that Windsurf is good for the largest applications that are really, really intense and complicated. But to get started, I think Bolt is the best one. And last year, I used one of these IDEs to help build Trader GPT, my AI trading bot builder tool, which I now have a great community around. And people are building amazing trading bots. It's integrated with X's API, all sorts of brokerages like Alpaca, Coinbase. People seem to really like it. And I built this whole thing with an AI editor cursor, which is amazing. And it just goes to show how fast you can build these tools. So for the sake of showing how fast these tools are, let's build one right this second. So we're going to talk to Bolt and we're going to build an AI email marketing assistant that's profitable. Let's try it out. I want you to build me an AI email marketing assistant tool that's profitable. I want it to be simple. I want it to work and I want it to be full stack so that I can just deploy it immediately. Integrate all the payments that you need, Stripe, whatever it is, so that I can just take this app one URL and give it to somebody and sell it and they can pay me and this service will help them with email marketing as simple as possible, please. It is now designing a full stack AI email marketing assistant app. It's built with node.js. So it's going to be a server based application, a JavaScript based application. It's installing all of the dependencies with NPM install things we would have to do locally. And once it's creating this entire project structure, we're going to run this and we're going to see how fast it took to build this. OK, so in under five minutes, this generated a full stack AI email marketing assistant tool that's ready to deploy with a React front end, a back end API, Stripe integration for payments and all sorts of features here. We could see the login page, the registration, there's a pricing page, checkout, success, everything we just have to input our Stripe API keys and this thing's ready to start marketing. It's pretty cool, right? One shot, we can build an MVP today. So there are no more excuses. But the second tool set we're going to talk about are AI research engines. These are so popular these days. Grok is my favorite one that I actually use. Super Grok, I should say. And Deep Search is an amazing feature, but it's all over the place. Google has Deep Research. ChatGPT has a Deep Search tool. All of these AI companies are creating these deep search tools and what they essentially do is they aggregate all of this information. And what this is going to allow us to do for profit is perform what I like to call knowledge arbitrage. And what that means is profiting from information asymmetry. So there's a few steps here. The first one is to identify the research gaps. What is the emerging trend that we have in our head? Like, is it that this team is going to win? Is it that this stock is going to be profitable? Is it going to be that this specific type of interface might be good for this industry? That's going to be our idea. And then the AI is going to when we prompt it, it's going to collect all of these knowledge assets, thousands of sources, hundreds of sources, and then synthesize all of them into a unique package. And it's going to deliver deliver that package to us. And what we can do is then build an information product around that information, that very valuable information, or go into consulting where we provide advice to other businesses using these AI research tools that an analyst would do otherwise. I have been using this in my profitable application wager GPT. So let's look into a demo of how I'm actually using these knowledge deep research tools. So in wager GPT, you can see on our flight deck feature, which shows our top five picks for the day, what the bot thinks the top five picks are for today. Now I can now prompt it even further and say, 
please tell me why you think the Philadelphia 76ers are your pick. Why do you think that? Use the web to find out information and list the top five reasons. And what it's gonna do is gonna analyze real-time data and it's gonna give it back to me. And the way it's doing this is a combination of all sorts of AIs and crawlers that I've implemented similar to how Grok is working, similar to how OpenAI is working. These LLMs scrape data from the web and then process them in their in-memory context window. So you can see here's the top five reasons right here for the state. It compiled a bunch of sources and it gave me that analysis. And people pay for this $200 a month for this information asymmetry for sports betting. And the reason they still pay for it a year and a half after I launched it is because it works and because that information asymmetry is profitable. Shout out to the Wager GPT community. Let's keep winning. And a great way to use this in your own process is to think about an industry that you're familiar with, that you're passionate about, and then apply this tool to that. Who could profit from this information, this really dense information? That's who you need to be thinking about. Now let's move on to the third category, agents. Now agents might just be the hottest topic in AI today. Not just might, it definitely is. That's all anyone talks about. But there's a reason for that. And that is, it is the natural evolution of the large language model. We don't just have language models that spit out text. We need them to do things. We need them to perform actions, to have agency. That's why we call them agents. And in this diagram, you can see that I like to think of agents as a system. I don't just like to have one agent. I like to orchestrate them. So I have one orchestrator agent that is kind of managing all the other agents and the other agents are doing different tasks like content creation, data analysis, distribution, engineering. And the reason agents are better for this than humans is that you just spend less time doing all of this. It's just supposed to take on more tasks. So what are some real world use cases of agents? I have personally built agents for hospitals, for a doctor, Dr. Sanjay Prasad. And this agent helped rate surgeons and create reports autonomously about their performance. And it was a great contract. We worked on it for a few months and they implemented this inside of their hospital system internally this agent to rate a bunch of surgeons and improve their performance. And this AI is improving over time. It's getting more and more access to data, medical reports, administrative reports, and it's compiling them and it's performing a bunch of actions that employees would have to do otherwise. This was one profitable application of an agent, but I also built this AI call agent for myself to help negotiate this hospital bill because it's annoying to have to call them. And I think that this could be repurposed for a bunch of different negotiations. The idea here, guys, is that an agent is proactive. It's not reactive. An LLM is reactive to when you talk to it, but an agent goes forth and does things on its own. So you can see in this simple demo app that I created called Bill Fix, that once you log into the app, it's gonna ask you for a prompt. What do you want to talk about and what phone number do you wanna call? So I just say, cancel my cable service or find me a doctor or book me a doctor appointment at 2 p.m. Give it some system prompt, enter a number, and then it will make the call for me. And I find this to be a huge opportunity because every time we call a health insurer or any sort of corporation, we as consumers have to talk to the AI and press two, and it's annoying. Let's have them talk to our AIs. Let's empower consumers with AI agents so that they, the corporations and the agents for them, are talking to our agents and we're off there on a beach just enjoying time with our family. There's a huge market opportunity for agents to empower individual consumers. And I think this, this opportunity is just gonna keep on increasing. So let's break it all down into one cohesive roadmap that you can use to get better and to make money. So there's six high value AI skills that I've identified. The first is AI integration. AI integration is super important. How do we integrate these tools with all the other existing legacy systems? Prompt engineering is also super important. How do we actually get these things to interpret the data that we already have? And a lot of times you got to put that domain knowledge in the prompt. So the prompt could even be several essay like pages long. And I did that for the surgeon because Medical data in particular needs really good prompt engineering. Data preparation, that's always gonna be useful. Agent system design, we talked about that. AI native development, guys, we need to start using tools that are AI at the core. So nothing like Visual Studio Code with AI talk tacked on. Cursor with an AI native flow. And then the last one is AI strategy. How do we advise all these people who don't know about AI how to use AI? And I've created a 30-day AI implementation roadmap for you to start generating AI revenue within one month. In the first seven days, I want you to select a business model, research your industry, master one tool, whether it's Cursor or Bolt, 
define your value proposition and then set a revenue goal. Maybe it's a thousand dollars. That could be very achievable no matter where you are in the world. Days eight through 14, you build that MVP, you improve it, test functionality, make as many iterations as you need to. And on day 15, after two weeks, you create proof of concept. You demonstrate results by getting it out there and getting your first documented case study, give it to friends and family. And by the day 22 to day 30, you're going to get at least 10 prospects. So you're gonna close your first deal and get 10 prospects. This is very, very possible. And in fact, it's easier than applying to a job. How many people are applying to hundreds of jobs and not getting any reply? The reason is because of AI. AI is automating all this stuff. So you need to be an AI owner. That's what I want you to be. Now, in the longer case study is 90 days. So after the first 30 days, you're gonna keep going until you get up to $10,000 a month in run rate. And the way you're gonna do that is to create multiple revenue streams not just AI consulting, but you want an AI SaaS app. You want an agent. You want content creation. You want to have diversity in your revenue streams so that total amount is gonna be bigger. And I see a lot of common mistakes here, so I'm gonna highlight four that I went through so you don't have to. The $10,000 mistake is perfectionism. That means just spending months iterating without launching anything. I promise you it's better to fail fast. You will learn a lot more. The second one is tool obsession. This is a $5,000 mistake and I am super guilty of this, being too obsessed with some tool because of the name and branding. Don't get too stuck on one tool. The third one is market blindness. Now this is a huge one, it's a $20,000 mistake and that's building solutions without validating market demand first. I did this the wrong way with Code Royale. Code Royale was my machine learning educational game that the market wasn't ready for. So I wasted a lot of money on it. And then underpricing, this is a huge mistake, a $50,000 long-term mistake that's gonna hurt you in the long run. You want to price your app high enough so that you're profitable. Don't make a $10 a month app, at least $50 or more a month to give you the value you need for your time. So there's a lot more I could be talking about in this video, but that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, smash that like button. That's what gets it to be promoted and for other people to be helped out. Hit the subscribe button because I'm gonna keep putting out educational AI videos every single week right here on YouTube. I love you guys sign up for the arena this is the ai accelerator that i've wanted myself that i'm building this year it's a wait list right now but if you sign up today you could be one of the first to get invited to it it's basically a direct mentorship with me we're gonna build ai startups rapidly and it's gonna be a lot of fun so sign up for the waitlist at the arena.tech and until next time i've got to go crank that soldier boy